What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Now, for anybody who was here last week, you'll remember that we left off with Jose. So let's take a look here. So it looks like a really great start position. Good bracing through the upper back. Uh, this is a fantastic deadlift, man. Uh, unfortunate that we have to use the uh, the hex plates there. I mean, that's never uh, a lot of fun. You can see the bar kind of like roll around and bounce around a little bit uh, as a result of, of having those plates. But like positioning is pretty well perfect. He maintains his torso angle throughout. He's starting with a, a lot of knee extension. So we're getting a lot of quads driving off the floor. His back angle doesn't really change. He stays over the bar and then pulls his hip through at the top. Fantastic. I don't think I would change a single thing about that, Jose. All right, our next one here comes from Rodrigo. Now, Rodrigo is doing a squat here, uh, or some squats. He said he wants to compete next year, wants to know, uh, wants to get a bit of a depth check. So let's be critical there. All right, so we'll start with the unrack. Bar position looks good. I think we could get a little bit tighter before we unrack, because there's still kind of like, there's a, there's a lot of movement there as you go to unrack. Depth is tough to tell from this angle. I feel like that's right on the line. Um, like this camera angle specifically is really hard to tell depth. I mean, to me that looks like you're pretty much at parallel, but from a front uh, or side angle, it might look a lot better. It's tough to say. I think one thing you're, you're doing here is you're really knees forward. So if you do need to get extra depth, try to limit that forward knee travel just a bit and push back and down kind of into your hips and that'll help get that hip crease a little bit lower than the top of the knee. Also looks like you're getting a bit rolled forward. We could use some work on that shelf on that upper back as you come out of the hole. I think there's like, there's a lot of movement between reps. You're trying to like really overextend and then you're trying to pull down and you're like, there's a lot of movement in the upper back between reps. If we watch here, you're kind of like tucking the shoulders and then you take a big breath and then you puff the chest out. I would maybe try not to be so extended because it looks like you come up generally in a pretty like neutral position. So like a ribs down, um, not super extended, but rather like a more neutral kind of structure position. Go look up the video we did with, uh, with Liz Craven. Liz Craven and I did a video on bracing. I, I think you might benefit from trying that style of bracing. A little more ribs down, a little more sort of overall neutral. Um, and it might also help you get a little bit easier depth too. So try that out. Up next, we have Farouk and Farouk's benching. Um, currently has a knee injury and he's 18 and would love to compete someday once his knee's feeling a little bit better. So hopefully you're uh, having a speedy recovery there, Farouk. All right. So let's see this. We don't really see the unrack, but it looks relatively sturdy, settled in. He's got his butt up when he unracks and sets it down before the press. Looks like we're a little bit relaxed on the chest. We have this like sink and then push kind of thing. And what I'd like to see more of is more consistent leg drive. So we're staying a bit bigger, trim that range of motion down and stay full leg drive engagement throughout instead of having this like lapse of tightness when you bring the bar down into your chest. So when you're when the bar is on your chest, keep that weight in your hands. Don't let it rest on your chest. The pause should be an isometric contraction, not a relaxation. All right. Hopefully that helps, man. All right, now next up we have Aaron doing some deadlifts. And Aaron is uh, looking to get some tweaking done to his deadlift. Wants us to kind of see what we can figure out with his technique. He currently does not compete and just trains to get stronger. Deadlifts have been an issue where he tends to have an arch back, which does give him some pain experiences. Um, he currently has an online coach, but he'd like to get some other people's thoughts. So unfortunately, a bunch of his back is cut off here, but let's take a look. Let's see what we can see. So now when you say arched back, I mean, I, I wish I had you here to talk to, but when you say you have an arched back, um, so generally speaking, arched means we're going to be in extension, which means that we're, we're kind of in anterior pelvic tilt and the, the pelvis is kind of oriented like this. And this is the trunk, this is the hip socket and the shoulder socket here, whereas flexion would be kind of this here. So when you say arch, I'm not sure if you mean flexion or extension. So 
generally speaking, if it's going into flexion that's bothering you, I would A, first look at load management. So try to figure out if maybe you're just doing too much overall, too much stress on those muscles. And maybe you can tolerate that flexion, but maybe you need to do a little bit less uh, and kind of gradually work up to that and adapt to that position before um, you really try kind of maxing out or, or doing a maximum amount of work. Now, the other thing is maybe we try to move into more of the other range of motion, right? If it's being in this flex position, um, that bothers you. Maybe we try to get into a little bit more extension. One of the ways you can do that uh, if you're a thicker fellow like myself is try doing some sumo deadlifts. I would say, you know, try out some sumo deadlifts, see if you can get into a bit of a better position and see if that helps alleviate some of that pain that you're experiencing. Uh, I know for me, that was that's a big reason I don't conventional deadlift anymore. Straight up. Um, I had some hip issues actually, um, not back issues hip issues that caused me to transition over to sumo deadlifting and I'm able to sumo deadlift without pain eh, most of the time not not I mean the hip pain eventually kind of came back I think it was just a, a symptom of doing what I do to my body anyways that's a whole other video for a whole other time but basically speaking um Switching to sumo allowed me to do a lot of work, get really strong again, train, enjoy my training, enjoy progression uh, without that pain. So first look at load management, then look at positions, and if all else fails, maybe try some sumo deadlifting and see if you can find a way to deadlift pain-free that way. Up next, we got some bench press from Key. Key's doing uh, some bench press here. He says he's been watching our videos for a while, loves the content. Uh, he's been lifting properly for about four years now. Now he's got a tendency to sink the bar into his chest. Sometimes he also has trouble with the stability more than anything, thinks that's due to never working in touch and go bench. He's always positive. Uh, his comp PR uh, is 275, and this was a set of three at 170. All right, so let's take a look. Nice living room setup. That grip, bro, so narrow. One thing that might help right away is widening that grip up. And I know I suggest this to a lot of people, but a lot of people have super narrow bench grips and don't look at, okay, maybe that's something that we can adjust to try to be more efficient. Uh, so that's one of the first things I would look at is, is like your, your grip is like here, right? Let's see if I can get that on camera. You're gripping it like here. Grip it like there, man. Bring that grip out. See if that helps. I think that's going to allow you control more of the range of motion because it's going to be less range of motion. See how your, your humerus is angled downwards there with a wider grip. You're going to be a little more neutral. You might not have to bring it your elbow past the line of your body and you might be able to get a lot more control. Now, it also looks like this rack might be kind of limiting how wide you can go because those uprights are. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can still go probably a full hands width out before you're crushing your fingers in there. So that would be the first thing I would do. The next thing I would do is, is create a bench variation. Um, and I, I would call these like a t-shirt press. So if you can create a bench variation and, and, and just bear with me for a second, but use it in your programming as a secondary bench press where you focus on the sole purpose of a light touch where you're just trying to touch your t-shirt. You're not trying to sink in. You're not trying to touch your chest. You're trying to touch your t-shirt. That's going to be a really great way to help build control out of the bottom too. So that would be one of the, the big things I would suggest there. Everything else looks okay. Setup looks okay. Unrack looks okay. I think with a wider grip, you're going to be in a lot better position throughout. All right. Now this last one, we're going to throw up for everybody to check out and leave your constructive criticisms in the comments below for our boy, Chris. So Chris said he just started watching our Form Check Friday series about two weeks ago. He said he's already learned a lot. He's 23 years old, 75 kilos, and he lifts here in Calgary. I've been to that gym. Uh, he says he's been powerlifting for about three years now using mostly the conjugate method. Man, come to our gym. We got bands, we got chains. You want to do all that crazy shit? Come do it with us. Uh, he says he does plan on competing eventually, probably when he finishes school. Uh, he says he's got a 100 kilo bench touch and go, a 175 deadlift and a 130 squat. The video he sent is a 3x4 at 80% low bar squat. He said it's been the weakest of his lifts for a while now, so he's trying to focus more on that. Uh, he sees a few faults, uh, some knee cave, hips shooting up, and a slight shift of the weight off the heels in the bottom. So he's been trying to fix falling forward with pause squats, bent over rows. Um, he wants to know if we should narrow his stance. Uh, tries to incorporate a lot of hip mobility, and another minor weird thing he struggles with is hitting plateaus. 
uh, sorry, hitting the plates on the rack when he rack unracks and walks out. And I think that's just an equipment thing. All right. So we're going to leave this for everybody to check out. Go ahead and leave your constructive criticisms in the comments below. If you like this content, make sure to stop by every Friday at 12 p.m. MST. That means today, Friday, 12 p.m. MST at twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. Come and check it out. We do live form checks, answer the questions that y'all have for us. And uh, it's a really good time. It's a really fun time. So check that out. Um, we'll see y'all in the next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. And we'll see everybody next time. Take care.